Coffee's Ghostbusters remake was not a big hit at the U.S. box office or with fans of the series. Though it made a decent amount of money with $229 million worldwide, it was not enough to warrant a sequel. While it looked like the book was closed on fi on, fi on Feig's Ghostbusters original franchise, star Dan Aykroyd has opened up some old wounds about the movie and its director, Feig. Speaking on Britain's Sunday Brunch via a report from EW, Aykroyd said, it made a lot of money around the world, but it just cost too much, making it economically not feasible to do another one. So that's too bad. The director, he spent too much money on it. He didn't shoot scenes we suggested to him, several scenes that were going to be needed, and he said, no, we don't need them. And then we tested the movie, and they needed them. <clears throat> and he had to go back, about 30 to 40 million reshoots. So yeah, he will not be back on the Sony lot anytime soon. Christian, thoughts on Aykroyd's comments about director Paul Feig? Uh, Dan Aykroyd is an absolute comedy legend and someone who came up, uh, that I came up loving with him and Belushi, but to quote John Campia, <laughs> shut up. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? This is like Paul Feig, he had, so the movie didn't do well. I didn't like the movie. It didn't do well. So you don't throw, a, a, by the way, someone whose career is way more elevated than yours at the moment, not talking about body work, talking about right now. And, and first of all, you were the guy that was coming out saying, this is a good movie. I dig it. I love it. And now because it didn't do as well, now you're throwing this guy under the bus? What are you doing? It's like, this is, it's, again, I didn't like the movie. I actually liked it less than I think most people on this table. But this is not something you do to a guy who, A, gave you that stupid-ass cameo in the first place and let you do it. That, your, your scene, Mr. Aykroyd, was one of the worst scenes in the entire movie. So everything you did in that was horrendous. So would you go at You shouldn't be allowed in the Sony lot for that scene alone. Um, so leave Paul Feig alone because that's a really bad business. That is bad business to go after a director of his caliber, honestly. And of a comedy. They're not going to let Paul Feig back on the lot because he didn't listen. He had to do a couple of reasons. That, that's, that's idiocy. And, Paul, and uh, Dan Aykroyd has done stuff like it, this in the past. It, it's not 1978 anymore, Dan. Shush, so you can still get work. Yeah. Uh, to quote John Campia, shut the fuck up, Dan. <laughs> yes. Like, I, I'm embarrassed that you have roots. You have Canadian roots. I'm embarrassed. Like, you, that, these are some of the most idiotic, stupid, self-centered things I could possibly hear. Anyway, who the fuck is going to want to work with you now, moving forward? Who would ever work with Dan Aykroyd moving forward now? Knowing that this piece of shit is going, like, if something goes wrong with the movie, he's going to grandstand and do all that. And like Christian pointed out, like, when this movie's coming out, like, he's, oh, this is going to be great. This is awesome. This movie's wonderful. Blah, 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 blah. And now, like, way post-mortem, way post-mortem, throw comments like this out? It's some of those, un like, you, you're in the business, man. Like, seriously, what, I, I to, to repeat what I just said, who, what director? is ever going to want to work with you ever again. Slimer. Like you're, yeah, Slimer. Well, I mean, apparently not really anybody wants to work with him now. But this is just like one of the stupidest things I have seen. Just shut up. Go crawl into a hole for 10 years and maybe hope that people forget that you opened your mouth and said this. This is just ridiculous. Anyway, Jeremy. I, uh, I, I feel bad for the fact that John Campy is coming to grips with the fact that even Canadians can be dicks. It's oh. like, I'm sorry, man. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's, it's, it's everywhere. You know, it's, I, why, why is it... Why was it even... I have to assume... Is, is it... If I'm taking a leap, is Wonder Woman's success the reason he brought this up? Or, like... Because I... The story is... Uh, in my Wonder Woman spoiler video, I actually had a part where I had mentioned... I was like, okay, so that Ghostbusters movie, people said it failed because people don't like women in lead roles. Then Wonder Woman crushes, so apparently they do. You just need a good movie for it, you know? And then I took it out because I was like, it was months ago. There's no need to rehash it. Now Dan Aykroyd's brought it up, so now we have to talk about it. So I guess I just can't escape it. But emulating what you guys said, it's it's you can't grandstand and then when it fails, be like, I knew it all along. It's like those are those are characters in comedy. You know, those are comedic characters that you see in movies where it's uh it's uh, it, it, who's the the head elf in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Who oh, he, uh, he gave he wants to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah. and then and then oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, the the other one, the, the one was like a dentist, and then oh, right, and, right, then right, in the right, end, right. he was like, I know he'd do it. I knew it all along. You know, it's like people who have such an opinion on something, and then they flip because of the situational circumstances. No conviction behind it. And now, yeah, directors are gonna look at that, and be like, oh, you mean you'll like it unless it doesn't do well, and then you're gonna throw us under the bus. So that's 
not a smart business move. Um, like you guys said, it's not the 70s anymore. Christmas with the cranks happened. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here's a little warning. Crystal Skull Vodka. It's a big, looks like a big skull, and there's vodka in it. Don't drink like three of them in a row and then do an interview because you're going to say <laughs> really, really embarrassing things that you'll regret for the rest of your life. Was he hammered? Um, no. Uh, he, had, he had to be hammered, <laughs> is what I'm trying to imply. It's like, because, come on, man. This is like, this is the kind of stuff somebody says who's like bitter with their own lives. They're irritated yep. that their thing didn't co go over well. So they're looking to point blame at all these different people. Paul Feig's already doing another project. Paul's got tons of projects lined up. I'm sure a lot of them are going to be great. I mean, not everybody hits 100. Look at your career, Dan Aykroyd. So it's like, I would be the last one to cast stones on somebody like this. Look, everyone did what they could and what they wanted to do. Everyone was like grandstand cheering on Ghostbusters. Was it a great movie? No. Was it fun? Yes, it had a lot of cool moments in it. Could they make a sequel for $10 million? Probably. Are they going to? No. Just deal with it. I mean, Aykroyd, you're one of those guys who I've read your comments for like 15, 20 years about Ghostbusters and like, no, we're gonna have these multiple different dimensions. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. You've had multiple cartoons. There's been tons of different exploitations of the Ghostbusters property. And now this one didn't hit it the way you wanted to, even though you were saying it's one of the greatest Ghostbusters sequels that you could have possibly imagined when it came out. Now you're hating on it. I don't know. It's like the, co the pot calling the kettle black. It's just horrible. Well, he was acting like a used car salesman. That's really what he was doing. Like you said, he's hawking out this material that he probably didn't believe in, right? So he throws that out there. But the other thing is that you're talking about as far as bitterness goes, when this, he was championing for Ghostbusters for so long. Yes. He was championing to get it back and, you know, and help it with Reitman to get for so long to make it again because, you know, he had his script. Because yeah. his stake, well, just in general, he wanted Ghostbusters to come back into the public to get franchise, to get that money back in his bank account. And because the it was this hot button and people were just it was people were talking about how it just was not working or you know the defense like Jeremy was talking before how explosive the conversation was about this thing right. and he blames Paul Feig now now the one thing though by the way that he should have done if even he wants to have these comments and and by the way know the guy's name the director well the director I can't be bothered <laughs> with knowing his name the director I was in the Blues Brothers and it's like it, so like he needs to show some respect or even change his comments a little bit going, I maybe would have done this and that and don't even mention Paul Feig at all. What if what if we he just like what if it's an April Fool's? Like what if it's a late April Fool's? Right. He's, he's, he's like, so joking, hammered he thought it was April right, Fool's. Right. Joking. Eh, who knew? Okay, so it's just brought to my attention that uh Dan Aykroyd has followed up oh, his okay. comments. This is this is on uh Dead Deadline Hollywood. I'm sorry. Um <laughs> so Aykroyd is somewhat trying to soften what he said, which is a good thing to do. He's, he wrote, uh, if I'm reading the article right, and I haven't had a chance to go in depth in this article, so forgive me if I'm reading this out of uh, sequential order, but uh, he wrote, we just wish we had been more included as the originators. It cost everyone, It cost everyone. as it's likely that Chris and Leslie, Melissa and Kate will never reprise their roles in Ghostbusters, in Ghostbusters which is sad, blah, blah, blah. Um, so in one hand, it sounds like he's trying to say, look, look, I'm, I'm just saying this, but it also then sounds like the, co the, the comment I'm reading now is basically saying, you should have listened to me more. Yes. Uh, no, that's exact, but that's how he's always been. He's, like, he's had the, the Dan Aykroyd Ghostbusters universe, and people didn't want to make it. That's why Bill Murray kept shredding the scripts for 15 to 20 years. It was like he, they didn't want to make that version of it, so that's why they ultimately went with a different version. He had to just accept it, and now it's bitter pills time. So you know, I just love the fact that Dan Aykroyd apparently watches movie talk. He's like, shit, they're talking about me. What I meant to say was, you know, what can I say? I we're, just, uh, we're making a difference. I just don't like seeing anybody, especially somebody as as iconic and as legendary and as everything that Christian pointed out about him, how important he has been to the world of comedy, sabotage themselves. Right. 